are. Say hi to Bill Squire. He's right over there. Oppressed hugs as we work on a day off. <laughs> you don't have to be here. I'm not going to be the only one that doesn't work. It's true. Mary Santora's in New York. What up? Outkick's back in Studio G. Afternoon, black people and black people only. Happy Martin Luther King Day. Oof. You know you're half white. Oh, yeah. Today's not. <laughs> not today. Not today. Yeah, not. I, feel, I'm, I feel I have been black my entire life internally, so, you know. Yeah, no, whatever you want to do. Listen, we are the only live show here today. Same here. For very good reason. I mean, I thought about it, and I might have overthought it. I'll give you that. I might have overthought it because my initial thought was, well, we're going to be here even though this is a holiday. <clears throat> I mean, we'll get another day. There'll be a day whenever you guys want to take one, you can take it. But I thought we just came off two and a half weeks of winter vacation, and it felt silly to be gone again so soon. So uh, this is actually just more of an experiment more than anything else, because in years past we have taken today, and this year I just thought about it, and I was like, it seems silly. We'll work on MLK Day, right? Um, Ghost Town. Well, I knew that, though. I knew that. I mean, there's people at TAM or whatever, and... um, so I was like, we were just off for two and a half weeks. And the other part of my thought was there are a lot of people who don't have today off. And perhaps they would like one of our shows here at WMMS to be a live show. And why not make it this one? And then I get here and I go, nobody's going to care. Mm-mm. Nobody's going to care. So listen, you experiment in the best way that you can. And why not? Why shouldn't we be here? What could we, what, Mary, what could you possibly have on your docket that would be more important than having fun for a few hours here? What could you possibly have to do? Well, in the city of New York, <laughs> there's almost nothing to do. No, I mean in your person. I meant in your personal <laughs> life. I oh, mean, it's not- you mean like uh, moving into a new apartment ah, or come on. writing a set oh. or editing video but I, but I, but I, or uh, yeah. Yeah. Nah, Any what? of that? But, <laughs> yeah, all right. But at iHeart New York, is is it a packed house there? Bro, is there anyone is there? No, it's a holiday. No. Listen, like I said, this is an experiment, right? I thought people might appreciate one live program today. Uh, you know, President's Day is coming up. That's a holiday. Bet you take that off. Uh, yes, we will take that off, of course. Ain't that uh, is that in February? February, yeah. February something, yeah. And then Juneteenth will be in the summer. And I, I said mm-hmm. last week I think that it felt stupid to take that off. But guess what? We're going to take it off. We're taking yeah. them all off. We're taking so them wait, all then, off. Here's my question then. Since we had to come in today, do we get to decide on a random day as a group as our makeup MLK yes. day? Yeah. Okay. Well, of course. I'll give you a suggestion because I'm taking a trip my birthday weekend, and that goes into that uh, Monday where it's um, – it's President's, President's Day. Day. So I'm going to be off the 16th. If you guys want to take that day off. That's well, it is my dog's guys. birthday. So it maybe is your I dog's birthday. Tell. It's, it's, it's a couple off. days after your daughter's birthday. Mm-hmm. So Yeah, I usually take her birthday off, too. So that It's might... a Saturday, though. Or no. No, her birthday is a birthday? Tuesday. Sorry. <clears throat> Brian's daughter's birthday is on Saturday. <laughs> there you go. The 17th. <laughs> the 10th. Oh, the 10th. Oh, the one yeah. before. Yeah. yeah. Well, listen, there's, there's all the calendars to look at and, and whatever. So, uh, but I thought, well, it'd be nice for the people who don't have today off to maybe tune in and hear a live program. Now, unfortunately for you, that live program is this one. So, what do you, this is what I get for being dedicated to my craft. Who cares? My dedication knows no bounds. Uh, Nevertheless, I've over explained it. I saw Oppenheimer. Oh yeah! I went to see Oppen- wow. I went to see Oppenheimer yesterday. I was surprised at how many people were in the theater. They're down to one showing a day on IMAX, and so I went to the noon showing, and I loved it. I loved it. What what a great great movie! I'm glad I went to see it in IMAX because I would not because of the wo- close ups. I would not have wanted to see a movie that massive on my television set. I think it was an IMAX for the for well, the sound, not the visuals. The sound, I couldn't hear what anybody was saying. Well, that's what I thought in this movie. I go, finally, a Christopher Nolan movie where you can understand everyone. It felt like he got the mix right. I, didn't, I, mean, a movie I like, disagree because I couldn't hear what the hell they were saying for like half the movie. I didn't have any problems along I those I, lines. I was in like the very back row, so I, know, I don't know I was if that... Sitting. 
made a difference? Well, I, I for whatever reason, it I just seemed real mumbly to me. Really? Real <laughs> yeah, oh, I yeah. loved it. I thought it was uh, great. The well, amazing thing about you. Oppenheimer, uh, amazing thing about the movie Oppenheimer is that every person in the movie is like somebody you recognize. Which even, I even think is small, a bad thing. Really? Yeah, because the whole time you're just like, who's that guy? Who's that guy? Who's that guy? Oh, look, there's, there's a famous person, another famous person, and it takes you out of the movie. Really? I Absolutely. Oh, I liked it. There's not one moment in that movie where I'm like, these are all characters that are uh, playing. I'm just like, okay, now there's another famous person and another famous well, person. Well, it tells me that everybody wants to be in a Christopher Nolan movie. Everybody knew that already. Yeah, but boy, he made a lot of phone calls to a lot of managers like, hey, I'd like you to be in my new movie. Now, you'll only be on screen for 25 seconds. Like, he had to call Josh Peck's manager. Remember Josh Peck? He was on a Disney show called yeah. Drake and Josh. I don't think he's the one doing the calling. No. Christopher Nolan? He goes, hey, I, I need to, these managers need to be called, right? These people who are going to be in this movie. Benny Safdie's in it. He's a friggin' director, for God's sake. But he's doing acting stuff and all right. Kenneth Braun is in it. Rami Malek's in it for like five minutes. You like the part where they're like doing the whole uh, scene where they're taking away his credentials and they got a bunch of explosions going on behind him to make sure you know that he he's or like the walls getting all wiggly behind him. Ugh. I didn't mind it at all. I, that, I, I thought again I feel it took like me out you, of the movie. I feel like when you go to see a Christopher Nolan movie now, that's kind of baked in the cake. I'll tell you what I was thinking was. Well, all, it's one thing when he's doing a movie like Inception or like. But this is a historical retelling. Like, it's a biopic, and the gra- the gravity of the situation was heavy enough Good that pun. you didn't have to do the effects behind Oppenheimer to make me know he was really feeling something there. No, he didn't have to, but and I, I and appreciate I did, I, what he did with it, and I, thought, I liked it I a thought lot. It, it took me completely out of it. I, I did not like that movie. I am the outlier. Everybody else thinks it's the best movie that's ever been made, but I just didn't like it yeah i i liked it uh, very very much i didn't feel like it was too long i didn't feel like that they missed anything it is one of those movies when you leave you're googling every character in the movie you're like oh who For like was historical reasons yes right yeah. because i mean listen a lot of people might not know the story about this at all about robert oppenheimer and you know and the the a-bomb so it is interesting, even if you have kind of a passing I knowledge. I thought the subject matter was absolutely interesting. Yeah. I thought the characters were good, but I just, there there were little things that kept taking me out of the movie. The way he made up the story about uh, Oppenheimer trying to kill the guy with the cyanide at the beginning was a pretty ridiculous choice to make. It was interesting. Yeah, it, like I, that's, a th- that's such a, a leap to make and be like, oh, yeah. Oppenheimer was this close to committing <laughs> well, murder. But the whole movie, you don't know exactly what was going on in these rooms. I mean, no one was privy to those conversations. Right, that, but them, that them, weren't matters them of co- public record. I thought them it was coming great. together to try and build the bomb was a little bit different than saying, Oh, I'm gonna poison my teacher and murder him. <laughs> that's 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 an artistic liberty to take that is pretty wild. I thought it was, just watching it, I was struck by how much film this guy expends just on B-roll. And then somebody's got to put it together. You know, they say the editors are the ones who really make the movies because they decide what goes in and what goes out. And just how much... I think he does all the editing. Does he? Well, there you go. I mean, I would imagine a movie like that he probably has to. He's probably not going to leave that to anyone else, but... Um, Let me know what you guys are done. I just, I just filmed. Here's uh, Forty-eight hours. Yeah, here's <laughs> here's fifty thousand miles or whatever it was, like the Earth's cir- circumference in film. Uh, let me know how it turns out. I mean, that's how <laughs> that's how most directors work. They hire an editor, and you know, some some directors edit their own movies, but most of them don't. So, no, I I, I enjoyed it a great deal. Boy, the scene where where Emily Blunt is imagining him banging his mistress. When they're in the boardroom <laughs> and Florence Pugh is buck naked on him and just stare. I was like, that must have been a fun day to shoot. Having a flashback where, where the two of the main characters are buck naked in a room full of guys in suits. That's Again, didn't weird. need that moment either. I remembered who the people were. Uh, and I thought that was just like I. Everything that people liked and thought like added to it, like that was a moment where I'm like. Yeah, we remember who they're talking about. We don't need the 
put them naked in the room. I, yeah, I just but it wasn't it was a, not I've good. seen documentaries on Oppenheimer. I didn't go there for that. I wanted some zhuzh. He wanted some naked. Oh, Let him I, have his naked. I ain't mm. fighting with Florence Pugh being naked. I mean, I'm, no, see, listen, her being naked's fine, but it's, I just, everything, uh, people liked it. I'm wrong. I get it. It's the best movie that's ever been made. I just oh. I'm not even I saying that. Like I just I'm just, like it. I'm just glad I went into it cold. I'm glad I didn't know who played Truman, and I'm glad I didn't know who played uh, a b- bunch of stuff. I don't know. I liked it a lot. I thought it was great. Um, there was no teaser at the end of the, the credits. That was a bummer. Uh-huh. But um, <clears throat> thought there would because that's part of the MCU, isn't it? Oppenheimer. Or did I, don't I think did so. I misread no. that? Yeah, mm-hmm. damn it. That, Oppenheimer is replaced by Tony Stark's dad <laughs> in the uh, MCU. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay, listen, I've got a break here. If you want to send a text, please do. We're here, 35192, alancoxshow.com is where you can watch live, and we'll be there. It's the Alan Cox Show. Everywhere on our free iHeartRadio app. Or whatever smart device you have. 